Hello there. Welcome back to Terry Farmercraft Hard Rock. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So we've traveled a little further south. We still have very far south to travel, but we did find this villager hut. Villagers are in Hard Rock. And this one here, he's a miner, so I can trade him gems for, well, cinnabar, which is redstone. Graphite, which we're going to need for, well, quite a few things. We needed to make gunpowder, but we also needed to make fire clay. We're going to need fire clay to make fire clay bricks, which we need for our blast furnace, which we need to make steel. That is, of course, assuming the process hasn't been changed in hard rock compared to Terra Firmacraft. But he also has this thatch bed. So we can click on it and it does say this bed is too uncomfortable to sleep in, but spawn set. So now if we die, we'll respawn here instead of Honestly, not that far away up here, but we have our spawn set. I would show you how these thatch beds work, but if I pick it up, I don't have a hoe. It, uh, it's gone. We lose it. But what you do is you get a large hide and you right click it onto two thatch blocks. Thatch blocks are, of course, made by combining straw just like this. And so you put the two, the two thatch blocks down. You right click the hide on and voila, you have a bed. So we're not going to be able to get much use out of this guy, but at least we have a spawn set and we still have to travel a very far distance. I am still in a region which is average temperature of 2.2 degrees Celsius. And we are looking for, well, about 10. We're going to keep exploring, but it was brought up in my last episode, and I think I should mention it, that there are three types of bronze. You have Bismuth bronze, which made with bismuth, zinc, and copper. Regular bronze, which is copper and tin. And black bronze, which is gold, silver, and copper. Aside from just looking different, each of the different types of bronze have slightly different stats. Bismuth bronze has the worst durability. Black bronze has the best durability on tools. On armor, bismuth bronze actually offers better protection against crushing damage, whereas black bronze offers better protection against piercing and regular bronze is a split between the two. Because there are three different damage types in Terra Firmacraft. Crushing, which you will do with a hammer or mace, and you'll receive that from unarmed zombies. You have piercing, which as you could imagine is bone arrow and a javelin and knife, I believe, and those will be if you get attacked by skeletons with bows or with spears, that counts as piercing. And I think spiders also count as piercing. And then you have slashing, which is your sword and your axe. And those will, of course, be done by any mo hostile mob carrying a sword or axe. And I am marking on the map where all these deposits are, even though I might not be back up here. Because once we have ourselves a permanent base I can show you how prospecting works since there is a little bit of confusion how to properly triangulate using the prospector's pick all right I'll see you guys in a bit well it's taken quite a few days but I think I found a decent spot it's not quite as warm as I was looking for I was saying around 10 C we're at 7.6 C but if we look at the area we've got some nice forests both to the north and south we have a river so I can make use of water wheels and create water power. But we also have access to the ocean, which means exploration should be pretty easy. Looks like there's a delta over here so we can get up this river if we want to explore to the north. Can't quite go east over here, although I can always terraform a bit and create a canal so I can travel to the east. Likewise, it looks like to the south. There are waterway connections to the ocean, so we could always take that as well. So I think this is going to be a very good spot. Also, uh, aside from the piranhas in the water, there don't appear to be any hostile mobs over here. And we've got hematite. We've got copper over there. We've got some zinc up there. So that takes care of our well next few tiers. We also have some food I saw there. Copper, copper, we're going to be going up this river. We can find a lot of resources. I have, first off, you want to see how far I traveled? 
Yeah. So we did travel all the way down here, about a thousand blocks south. And over here, it's closer to 10C, but I don't like the marshy terrain. We started way up around here, which is over 5,000 blocks away. So we've traveled pretty far, but we found a lot of stuff in the process. So we're going to be good on finding resources. At least I think we will be. We will be. Anyway, now that we've done this, I'm going to go start setting up. I am going to need to be filling in these areas. So I'm going to be terraforming in the future. Not necessary right now. We're just going to be building a starter hut probably next to this villager hut up here. This also gives us plenty of flat land. Don't have to worry about farming too much, uh, terraforming in order to farm. And then we can look at, well, first off, the resources we need to build a house. And also we can look at setting up our forge, the charcoal forge. See, that's some iron right there, hematite. So we've got an iron deposit real close to base. That's going to be very, very useful, very convenient in the future. We have a Siba setting up a charcoal forge so we don't have to keep making a pit kiln in order to cast ingots and also, you know, just make everything. We can make ourselves our stone anvil so we can start working on our copper anvil so we can then work on a bronze anvil because you need each subsequent anvil in order to make the next one. <sighs> so yeah, um, it's gonna take a little time to dig out and clear everything up. So I'm just gonna start putting stuff down and getting to work. Oh, I should show you what we picked up along the way. Quite a bit of phalarite, so we can make some bismuth bronze with that. We got plenty of cassiterite. Oh, I should take... I should take some of these things out before I uh, put them down. That down there. Place that. That's good enough. So plenty of tin. In here, we even got some more gold and some... Food, I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to put them into our big vessel in a minute because the big vessel will allow us to store these food for longer. Six days unsealed, 12 days sealed. So that's much better. <laughs> oh, um, hmm. I'm going to need to make a knife and cut away the barley so it lasts longer. A chest. Uh, we need. Okay, I need to put one of those down. I need to grab us. A few stones so I can make a stone axe because my other one broke. All right, let's make this a chopping block so I can. The plan right now is I'm going to turn this into some planks or some lumber. And then from the lumber, I should be able to make them into a chest, provided the recipe hasn't been changed for hard rock. Nope, recipes have not been changed. All right, so now we have a chest we can place down. And chests in Terraforma Craft only have two rows. It is double chest, so it's got four. The thing is, chests also have size restrictions. So logs very large they do not fit in chests to store logs shift click them on the ground you make a log pile then if you click on it you can see what's stored inside we're going to need a bunch of logs so we can make a charcoal pit to make charcoal that's going to be important because we need the charcoal in order to drink uh, to make purified water so we don't keep getting sick but small things stones our ceramic jug, those can all go into a large chest. Uh, actually, I think. Yep, most of these things can actually go in. The vessels can also. Not tools. Tools are too big. And do not store food in a chest because rodents can get into the chest and take your food on you. So, yeah, don't do that. Now, if we were to store tools, first off, you can store one tool on the ground at a time, but we would need to make a tool rack, which actually tool racks are pretty 
easy. I think I need uh, three locks to make a tool rack. Oh no, well, we made more than we needed. Do this, do that. That gives you a tool rack. Put that there, and then we can store up to four tools on the rack. And it doesn't take up extra space. You just click them off and on. All right, so like I said, I'm going to start leveling out and start getting resources I need, and then we will get started on building a starter house. I've gotten a few resources together, so let's go over some early game building materials. The easiest one is to make mud if you didn't find some on the ground. If you look in areas like up here, the lowlands, this is all mud. So you can feel free to collect this and use that to build out of. I made a bucket here, a water bucket. Very simple, three pieces of lumber in a V-shape like you were making a bowl in vanilla that gives you a wooden bucket. The important thing about these buckets are while they can carry, well, one bucket of fluid, uh, they do not create source blocks. So you cannot create an infinite water source with a wooden bucket. You need to get a steel bucket, which is going to take us quite a long time. What we can do is we take the bucket, we go over to our workbench here, put that there, and then we can fill this up with dirt and I'll turn it into mud. Once we have mud, we can either make wet mud bricks or we can make daub. I'm going to make a little bit of both just to show you. All right, so the wet mud bricks, we place these down on the ground. We place them in groups of four and they need time to dry. If it rains, it resets their timer. As you see, it's going to take one day for them to dry. So we're going to leave those there and just let them dry. The other thing we can do is now we've made daub, we can take two logs, stack them on top of each other to make wattle. We can place these down. They do stack, however, they are affected by gravity. So if you break one, all of them attached to it will fall. As is, I usually put rocks at the bottom, uh, cobblestone. Also, it looks nicer. So you put your waddle down, then you have to take sticks. And you see how that changed? It takes four sticks to weave the waddle. And now that that's done, first off, we can't go through these anymore. Whereas if I do these, we can walk right through them. All right, so this makes them a solid block so you can actually use it for building walls. You can then apply your waddle to it, change the texture a little bit. But if I make white dye, I can then apply the white dye to the unstained waddle and give it different colors. So you can have, so you can apply pretty much any of the dye colors to the waddle to you know, vary up the color. Maybe you want to do something a little different. So that's waddle. Those are bricks. Once they're dry, you put the four in your crafting grid and it'll give you one block per four bricks. So that's not going to be many bricks, but at least they'll give us something. I actually really hate the sound of walking on these bricks, so I never use them. Well, I'll use them in the walls. I will not use them in floors anymore because they're just, yeah, they don't sound nice. So that's two of your early build options. You could always take straw, do a thatch block. But the problem with these thatch blocks is, and you've probably noticed it with the villager houses, they have no collision, so you can walk right through them. They make decent roofs, but you definitely don't want them as your uh, walls because they're not going to actually offer you any protection. Next, we have our quest book. So the first quest you have tells you to find to um, take your Akashic Tome and turn it into the tear from a craft book. To do that, right click and you can look through and this one here is a tear from a craft book. You do that. Now you have the same book you can access from your inventory screen right there. This way you have it in the world. You don't have to switch menus to find it, but this has most of the information you need for Terra Firmacraft. And to reset it, just left click and it turns back into your Kashuk Tome. So now we can start looking at some of these other quests for this one. Health and stamina. More health, more stamina. 
to increase your health and stamina, eat a variety of food, because we have the Spice of Life mod. Spice of Life? Wait a sec. Yeah, Spice of Life. I, I'm not going crazy. At least I think that's the correct mod. Which, as you eat, you will gain additional hearts. So I actually just gained an extra heart. You see, I have three and one empty one because I was eating some food to recover my health. As it tells you 5, 10, 30, 60, so on and so forth. You also have a new health system, Control H, to access it. This shows you your health in each section. Actually, this is a tutorial. Walks you through how the first aid mod works. Because each of our body parts has health. As you can see on our little clay doll down here in the bottom, my head is red. My torso and arms are yellow, but my one foot and my one leg are green. That means that my health is lower in that spot. So here's our current health. Body's at one, head's at one out of two. Left arm and left leg are two and a half out of, sorry, one half out of two. So if we go back to our quest book, we can complete this having read that and we will collect my bandages and first aid bandage. I didn't want to collect these earlier because I did not I did not have the inventory space for it. But now we can apply these bandages to our body and it will speed up the healing process. Next quest just tells you how to change the shaders. I've got it set to the one that's default in the mod, which is the complementary shaders mod. We can just click that, complete that. And the next quest for now is survive. And this goes over a lot of what I mentioned in the first episode. Uh, also includes information on how to make leather. So I'm going to go over this. I'm going to skip it, really. I will be covering it myself. Fauna threats. We we discovered this the hard way with the snakes. Uh, there are other animals. Hippos, bears, tigers, lions, panthers, spiders. The spiders are a pain in the butt. So we know about those. They're all dangerous. And then we have weather. We can get tornadoes in this mod. So you're going to want to be careful what you build out of. Uh, dirt is not affected by tornadoes, but dirt is affected by gravity. Planks, trees, uh, maybe not logs, but leaves. They're all affected. So if you have a tornado come through, it will pick up segments of your house and destroy them. But we also get blizzards, I believe, with this mod. So that should be fun. And click this. That that just tells us how to change the key bind, which I already did in the first episode. And now we have a whole ton of mods unlocked for us to look at how to get water, summer, mobs, climate. A lot of these are stuff I've already started going over transportation inventory items and the first steps for making tools. So wants us to make our Kashuk Tome, the Terraforma craft book again. Tells us to pick up rocks and, you know, starts teaching us how to nap. So let's just grab these, grab some sticks. We've already got a stone knife, make a stone ax, shovel, spear, collect straw. Right, you get the idea. So I'm going to be completing a bunch of these ones that we've already gone over just in the process of surviving. So, you know, I'm not showing you every single little step along the way. And then we'll get back. Uh, these are dry. Those are still drying. So we can break these four. Oh, so we can break those. Turn it into sandy loam. Place the bricks down. And there we go. Now we've got some bricks that we can build on. And now I'm going to work on just building a very basic home for now. All right. So we cannot place these bottle over an open space. I grab one from here. If I click, it won't go. So we need to place something there instead. I'm going to be placing, well, I'm going to place a door on the bottom. So we need six lumber for that. That gives us two doors. Now Waddle can't go on top of the, oh, now mind it can go on top of the door. So there you go. 
Now these wattle blocks, the ones without the daub applied to them, if you break them, it drops the wattle and the sticks. But if you break one of these unstained wattle, it drops the whole thing as one block. So you turn it into wattle, you apply the daub to it, and then you can move stuff around without worrying too much about it. So that's the very, <laughs> very bad start to a house. Don't worry, we'll make something much better later on. This is really just, uh, uh, well, getting our feet wet. And then we'll add a roof at a later point. Hi there, Future Arc Wolf here. I recorded a full segment on charcoal, the charcoal forge, the stone anvil next to me. I hated all of it. So we're going to do this again. You need charcoal to make your charcoal forge in order to start melting down resources so that you start so that you can start casting them into molds and then working them on an anvil. Yeah, so it's fairly easy, although it might seem like a lot for the charcoal forge. You need five stone blocks. I use cobblestone, but you can also use stone bricks to make a well, make this shape where it's one on the bottom and then four on the sides. You then take seven charcoal and you click them into the slot in the middle of the forge. Once you have seven, you can grab your fire starter. Shift right click and hold. And now it's lit. Now you have a charcoal forge. These slots here is where your charcoal will go to feed your forge. These slots are for whatever you are melting. You can put vessels in here. In fact, that is a good way to alloy early on. These slots here are sort of a buffer. If you melt copper or anything in any of these slots, you need to have something over here to catch the melted metal. If you don't have anything over here, you lose it. So always make sure if you're forging something, you have at least a vessel over here to catch the metal. Also, if you're melting two metals at a time, I don't recommend it. If they mix and they're not supposed to mix, you will wind up with an unknown alloy, which is useless. To make charcoal, you need a charcoal pit. So I've got a one by two hole dug here. We're going to shift right click a log onto the ground. This makes a log pile. Do it again. It'll put all the logs into the pile. Right clicking on the pile will open up this screen. I'm going to do it twice here. So we have 32 logs in this pile. We then want to put dirt on top after we light it. You can use a torch. If you throw a torch onto it, it will eventually light. It might take up to um, uh, 30 seconds or so. If you use a fire starter, you just hold and click, same as you do every other time. And then immediately cover it with something. In this case, we're using dirt. We now see smoke particles coming out. That means the charcoal or the wood logs are burning into charcoal. This will take you about 16 hours and when it's done, you will have charcoal. 16 logs will turn into about seven or eight charcoal. So we put 32 logs in, we should get 14, 15. Very rarely will you get a full 16, a full eight from a pile. It does happen occasionally. It's not likely to happen though. So that's our charcoal going. Here's our charcoal forge. Our stone anvil when we want to make this we need to take the raw stone that we collected earlier and place them in a row like this you then right click with your hammer on the middle block this one here and it will turn into a anvil block we can then click on it open up the anvil screen we can store our hammer in here with the stone anvil you cannot use plans to create any tools. The only thing the stone anvil is really good for is taking copper ingots and welding them together into double ingots, which you then need to make your copper anvil. So here's your copper ingots, your double copper ingots. 
in the shape to give you an anvil. And then once you have this, you can start using it to make copper tools and also to weld bronze into a into bronze double ingots, which you need then to make bronze anvil. You can only forge tools on the same tier or below the tier of the anvil. So a copper anvil can only make copper tools. A bronze anvil can make bronze or copper. A red steel or blue steel can make anything, but you can weld the ingots from the next tier up on the lower tier anvil. So again, the copper anvil, we can weld bronze. On the bronze anvil, we can weld iron. On the iron, we can weld steel, etc. To weld, we are going to need flux. You need to heat up the ingots until they say can weld. It'll be near the point where they it'll be near their melting point. So you have to be careful with that. You need two of them at that temperature. You place them onto the anvil. You take your hammer in your offhand. You shift right click and they will wield. I'll show you that when we get to it. You also need flux. We get flux from crushing certain stones, chalk, marble, lime, but also shells, seashells, that sort of thing. So we're going to have to keep an eye out for those. I collected quite a bit of copper here. So we are going to try to make a bronze tool. All right, so if we put 14 copper powder in, no, 12 copper powder in, four bismuthinite, and for cephalorite, for zinc, this will give us one ingot's worth of bismuth bronze when it's done. We put that right there. Let's take our chisel mold. Mold. I'm going to need the chisel in a minute. So we're going to store that there. We then grab some of our charcoal from here. And we can shift click it in and it'll automatically feed in where it needs to go. There we go, now it's heating. The more stuff in a vessel, the slower it will take the heat up. Once it reaches its full temperature, the temperature at which everything melts, it will mix together, alloy into bismuth bronze, and then we can cast it out in the chisel, just like we would if we were trying to cast it or make it in a pit kiln. This is quicker. It does take uh, charcoal fuel as opposed to wood and thatch, but it's better. As you see, the charcoal is burning down. As it burns, it subtracts from here and fills lower. Each charcoal has a timer on it. It burns for 1 minute and 40 seconds. Once it goes out, you're going to have to relight the forge. We don't want to waste that, so we're just going to gather up a bit more charcoal and toss it in. You can always remove excess charcoal at any point. We do have ambiental, so it is getting rather hot next to the forge, so I'm going back off for a little bit. Once the forge is done, once this heats up to, it's going to be 1080 degrees Celsius, this will become an alloy. We can cast it. This shows you what the temperature of the forge is. If we had a bellows, I just punched a rock. If we had a bellows, we can place it here to blow onto the forge. That would increase the temperature of the forge, but it would use the charcoal faster. So it's got trade-offs, as do most things in Terra Firmacraft. Okay, so the bismuth bronze is done. It says it's bismuth bronze. We can now pull this out like we would before. Pull out all the excess charcoal. We don't want to waste it. Open it up. Pour out the bismuth bronze into the chisel mold. We're going to need this chisel in a very short time. Place that there. This will burn out once it's done with the last of the charcoal. I'll put the excess there. And we want to grab a... I have sticks on me. The bismuth bronze is now solidified. You can right click to pull it out or you can place it in your crafting grid. I'll do this. Turn this into a chisel. Because we need this for the next important part. We want to take rhyolite here. We need to chisel it into smooth rhyolite because we need that to make a quern. We put those like that, two underneath. That gives us the quern. We do another two stone plus a stick above it gives us the hand stone. We can now put these on the ground and by clicking that we can grind. 
let's grab a one piece of grain put it there grind it you just need to click it once it'll grind on its own once it's done well now we have flour but this is also useful because we need the corn in order to grind down any non-small nuggets that we pick up off of the ground so if we go mining example right over there where the iron is if we mine up a chunk of hematite it will either be poor normal or rich we need to grind it in the handstone actually we need to hammer it first wash it in our sluice then grind it in our handstone then wash it in the sluice again and then it will be this powder form which we can then use in the forge to well forge tools and the charcoal pit is done. You can tell because the particle stopped. We dig it. And there we go. Charcoal piles. Just like what I have stacked up right there. So this is like the smallest. You could technically just do one pile of logs to make a, a very small charcoal pile. This is the smallest I would do. I'm probably never going to do another one this small again. From now on, I'm going to aim to make much larger ones. Because here. I got 13 out of that. Not a ton, but, you know, definitely good enough to get us started. I'm also going to mine up all these so I can store them in a chest since it's a little more space efficient. We can make a very large charcoal pit, make it nice and deep, nice and round. We can use the bricks that I made earlier, the ones that I hate. I have no clue where I put them, maybe in a chest. Yep, the mud bricks. We can use those to make a charcoal burning building now, I might actually do that and then you could just fill it up light it up and come back to it later and since I'm re-recording stuff I might as well re-record this one in order to get raw stone like this right like here what we need to do is mine away all the blocks on each of its six sides so this one's a good example if I remove this block here and this one up here, and then remove the block behind it. I gotta remove this one now because it shifted. Now the top is clear, the four sides are clear, we just need to remove the one on the bottom. We mine this away. Okay, two, two things just happened there. One, the raw stone dropped and we picked that up. Two, you heard that sound, that crumbling sound? If you hear that while you're mining, stop mining. That means you're at risk of causing a cave-in. Or that there has been a cave-in. <laughs> but that's how you get your raw stone, and you need three for your stone anvil. You need two for your hand stone, and you need four for your quern. So together, that's nine minimum. You will need more in the future, but hey, now you know how to actually get them. If you mine a raw stone, it only drops the loose stone. If you mine cobblestone, it will drop as cobblestone. So figuring out how to mine them, it's pretty easy. But once you get the pattern while you're mining for ore, you'll be able to get a lot of raw stone if you're looking for it. Uh, episode's running just a little longer than I expected it to, but eh, what can you do? Before we go, I want to show you one more important thing. So we have our quern now, and heads up, I'm going to call it a quern all the time. It's a habit I got into, and I haven't been able to break it. Now we have it, we can put our charcoal in it. The same way we ground flour, we can grind the charcoal. This will give us charcoal powder. We can then use this charcoal powder, again, gunpowder, but most importantly, we can use it to boil water to make purified water. And that's water we can drink without getting sick. Right now I have soup in the pot. I can't pull it out. Uh, if I was to make the purified water, we'd grab our bucket of water, click it on the pot, put the charcoal in, put logs underneath, light it on fire, wait for it to boil, and then it'll be pure. Once we have pure water, we can go over to our barrel here, which I made earlier and I didn't show it on camera. Just seven lumber in a U shape. And we can open it up and we can either 
right click to put in or pull out or you can put it into this slot and it will fill up or again put in a slot to pull it out if you have something like vinegar in here you can put vegetables here and seal it to to make the vegetables last longer actually it doesn't have to be vegetables it can be almost anything but yes this is how you seal the a barrel and that's used for quite a few recipes anyway we'll get to that next episode until then thank you for joining me today i hope you've had a wonderful day and i'll see you next time later <laughs>